Live from their studio in South Florida, Twist Gaming. Featuring lead broadcaster, Matt Koza. Co-host and creative genius, Josh Perry. Co-host and interviewer extraordinaire, Anne Lazito. Co-host and marketing mogul, Aaron Murphy. With appearances from special guest, Lucy. Welcome to Twist Gaming, where you get to play board games with us. Good evening, everyone, and welcome. This is Twist Gaming. As usual, I'm Matt. I'm Ann. I'm Josh. And this is our Spotlight Show, where we show off games that are just coming out into the biz, and we have the pleasure tonight of showing off 1001 Odysseys by Asmati Games, and we are joined with Julia, the creator of 1001 Odysseys, and Chris of Asmati Games. Folks, how are you doing tonight? We're doing great. Good. How, how are you all doing? doing? Fantastic, especially now that we get to play this game a little bit more. We had the pleasure of showing off 1001 Odysseys a little bit at PAX Unplugged, <laughs> and I wanted more because it's awesome. And uh, we have it here for the, on the table for you. So first and foremost, before anything else, we would like to say big shout out and thank you to Asmati Games for sponsoring this stream and all of this week's streams for 1001 Odysseys. And I'm going to throw that sponsor link up in the chat right now. And then I'm going to do my favorite thing. And I'm going to ball it up and throw it over to Anne. Anne, take it away. We need an actual ball as a prop for that little uh, I'm routine. I think that that would be phenomenal. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to come and hang out with us tonight and to show us this awesome game. Uh, as Matt was saying, they guys got to play the game a little bit at PAX Unplugged. And uh, I know just you know the conversation we were having before the convention, this was definitely the game that Josh wanted to make sure that he saw while mm -hmm. we were at the convention. We were talking about what we were looking forward to. And when he got to sit down and play it a little bit, it definitely Definitely did not disappoint. So, we're I'm really excited uh, to jump in. I, uh, you know, the guys have been talking about it. It's a story-based game. This sounds like it's something that's really right up my alley. So, thank you again for uh, coming on and sharing this with us. So, Julia, let's talk a yeah. little bit about the game. Mm. Um, I was doing a little bit of research. So you've been with Asmati for a couple of years now, but is this the first game that you've created? Yeah, I've actually been with Asmati uh, going on, I think, like four and a half years now. So it's, it's been it's been some time. Um, and I've been working on A Thousand One Odysseys since then. Yeah. <laughs> um, but this is the first game, you know, I've been with Asmati and, you know, we've always been kind of working on Odysseys, you know, in the background, but right. a lot of our other games have come on since then so I've like helped with play testing but this is yeah this is really the first game that I've kind of had a, a leading role in developing. That's really fantastic. What has inspired you to take that leap from you know play testing games and being a board game lover to creating mm -hmm. your own game? I mean so one of the first games that I played actually was uh, Tales of the Arabian Nights which is an older board game from the 70s and it's really heavy on the storytelling on the text you're basically playing as a kind of a hapless human wandering the world and, and crazy things happen to you and i was like i want to make a game just like this but with plum plum but in space <laughs> um so that's kind of where the seed of uh a thousand one odysseys was born along with kind of other uh games that i played way back when has this universe um, been something that you've thought up before the game came into an existence or is this something that kind of all came together at the same time? Uh, well, once we realized we wanted to put the game in space, it was kind of a matter of being like, okay, well, we need aliens. Uh, what kind of aliens do we want to create? So it was really just a, it kind of came up from there, uh, just trying to create all these different uh, aliens and creatures and whatnot. It was, it was a blast. Yeah, I think everything started coming together like within weeks of the idea, and then yeah. it was a matter of fleshing everything out yeah. for a very, very long time. That really is fantastic. And I know one of the things that you guys are really proud about with this game is that, you know, you didn't make it, you, you were able to make very diverse races. That These aren't just mm -hmm. multi-colored mm -hmm. people that you guys uh, have put some, uh, a, a lot of thought into what you want your aliens to look like, what kind of personalities they're having, and just make them very different, fun, and things you want to uh, find out more about. Intriguing. Where did the oh, inspiration yeah, totally. for that come from? 
Where sorry, where the what? Inspiration. The aliens. The aliens. Where did the inspiration um, come from? I've I've always had a really big imagination. I've always I've loved fantasy and sci-fi uh, for as long as I can remember. So it all came from my brain. <laughs> <laughs> that works. Favorite yeah, sci-fi like... movie? Oh well, oh, that's a hard one. Um, you can give me off my head. <laughs> oh gosh. You can give me um, a top five. Sorry. You can give me a top five. A, a one of a top five. Um, I can't. You know, I'm probably better like with stories. Oh, okay. I really like Minority Report. I really like AI artificial intelligence. Those are both. Those are both kind of downer sci-fi movies. <laughs> I find like kind of hot, uplifting. Sci-fi movies, maybe Galaxy Quest is kind of on the oh, like high note. Galaxy tone. Quest is so good. Um, it's great. I love it. That's wonderful. Now, Julia, Huge Doctor Who fan. Yeah. So am I. I got Josh to finally <laughs> catch up on the series, so now I have somebody to talk to about it. It's so good. <laughs> um, Peter Capaldi, how did you feel about it when he became a Doctor? Totally. He was a fantastic okay. Doctor. It was yeah. such a great take on it. Uh, so different from from Matt Smith. I didn't watch as many Matt Smith episodes. I'm more of an old Who fan, uh, which is a little bit different. But I love I love the new Who too. Uh, but they're such different shows. But that's, again, um, another, it, that's a great sci-fi film where you have different kinds of yeah. alien races that aren't humanoids, that they really did a great job of bringing mm -hmm. in diverse alien races and, and going and exploring mm -hmm. and doing in, in, plan, in the planet. And, you know, Julia, mm -hmm. I'm so excited to have you here and be able to play your game, but I know that, you know, this has taken more than just one person to come and take this from an oh, idea yeah to uh, a game for us all to enjoy. Who else has helped mm -hmm. you along the way? Oh, we've had so many great um, collaborators, writers, artists, designers. Um, I couldn't have done this, um, obviously, without uh, Chris Seslick, uh, owner of Asmaya Games. Uh, I also couldn't have done it without Sarah Faruqi, who has helped do a huge part of the design and writing process. Mm -hmm. um, Alice Stutton, uh, another one of our writers, uh, Trin Garitano. Uh, another writer, um, as well as their artists, um, Kari Kareen and Amanda Coronado, who have done the artwork that you see on the map. Just fantastic work. That's really awesome. You've got you've had a lot of writers, so I'm really interested. I'm going to keep an eye out for um, how the consistency in the stories. I know it's it's a challenge <laughs> to have mm -hmm. ideas from different writers and make things seem very mm -hmm. fluid. So um, I'm interested to mm -hmm. see how how that goes. So. I, uh, I talk too much because I'm Italian. And it just <laughs> <laughs> so with that being said, uh, Julia, do you want to share your world with me? You're going to bring me into 1001 yes. Odysseys. <laughs> ah, I'm so excited. Okay, so 1001 Odysseys um, takes place in the far-flung future. Uh, you all are playing as the humans on the starship The Odyssey. You've gone through uh, a portal or a wormhole of some kind um, off of Alpha Centauri, you have a moderately good faster than light drive, so you, you can achieve some faster than light travel. Uh, so you go through the portal, and what happens when the portal closes behind you? Gosh darn it. Um, so now you're kind of lost in this whole new region of space, and you have no, uh, no way of getting back home again. Uh, but you do discover uh, new and wonderful life in this particular corner of the galaxy. And that is known as the Federation, which is a huge, diverse collection of aliens uh, that all kind of reasonably get along with each other, um, but do bigger uh, at some points. Uh, so what Thousand One Odysseys is, is your adventures uh, through Insula, the, the region where the Federation lives. I'm really excited about this. I, and, I, you know, I have, like I said, I did a little bit of research, and I know, Chris, you had mentioned some influence of kind of a Mass Effect feel. So as I'm hearing Julia explain this, I'm definitely mm -hmm. thinking, like, of the Citadel and all of the alien races converging there. So that was definitely one. It's definitely one of my favorite uh, video game franchises. So the more yeah. I learn about this game, the more excited I am. The more excited you're to, getting. That's good. To play. However, being stuck <laughs> on an alien ship with you two... Never being able no to return home. home sounds terrible. So thankfully, we have Julia and Chris to keep me company and keep me away from killing <laughs> you too. <laughs> so Josh. Yeah, Matt. Mm? Oh, sorry, go ahead. Josh, uh, tonight's game is going to be a little different because we're going to have some interactive options for our audience. Yeah, so as options come up, uh, the crew will give our recommendations and then Twitch can kind of vote on who they agree with. So when that starts, you're just going to click on who you agree with. On actually on, on the, the screen, video, on, on the faces, the yeah. with your mouse. Yeah. Does it work on mobile too? 
Uh, maybe. We'll figure it we'll out. We'll find tonight. out. <laughs> Mystery. Dun dun dun. Uh, Matt, screen too dark or? Uh, it's a little too dark. If you could go back to the other up. setting. <clears throat> And another thing to note, this game is live on Kickstarter right now. So, guys, if you are here from the Kickstarter, mm -hmm. thank you for joining us. And if you are watching on our stream normally, go check out the Kickstarter. I'm going to post the link in chat one more time. Uh, Chris, how much time is left on that Kickstarter? Uh, we are running through the end of February. So uh, we started uh, last Monday, and we have 26 days left, 24 days left. I know what day it is. Yeah. <laughs> I always forget how many days there are in February. That's my problem. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then the last thing is we would like to point out that this is a uh, in-development prototype copy of this game. So there might be some right. things that you see that aren't finished component-wise uh, uh, that we will be, you know, just make a note of that. Uh, it might not have the final polish of the production copy. Uh, without any further ado, though, are we ready to get into it? I believe I think so. we are. All right, so one thing I want to note is that we each have different roles here, and uh, are those actual individual player options that we're going to have? We're going to have different roles and responsibilities in the game? Yeah, so um, there are four primary bridge roles in A Thousand One Odysseys. There's the commander, navigation, operations, and information. And uh, they're sort of the informal duties of what you need to do keeping track of the game's bits and, and making the game work. Um, so if you have more or less than four people, it's fine. You just sort of team up on various things or uh, do it all yourself if you want to play completely <laughs> solo. Um, just so, run the whole shit by yourself. Yeah. <laughs> It'll work fine. It'll be fine. Uh, the commander is in charge of being uh, in charge, which is why we've given it to Anne. <laughs> um, and your primary and most important role is to make sure that whoever's reading from the booklet uh -huh. is doing so with enthusiasm and proper uh, proper heart. You know what they uh, say about pick... being a good leader is having a good team? So I have yeah. one of my very favorite voice actors and readers right here. Josh? Yes, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> what else am I doing, uh, the Chris? The commander also gets to pick who's reading uh, for each, each paragraph. Okay. Um, the navigator is in charge of the map, putting new cards on the map, putting tokens on the map, moving cubes around the map. I said cubes and I meant uh, disks. Um, and then we have operations. So operations is in charge of the mission control board. Uh, the mission control board tracks how we're doing on missions uh, by putting momentum cards out into slots to represent the consequences and uh, momentum that we've gained from choices we've made. All and right. finally, we have the information officer, and we're going to be playing the role of information in this uh, this game. The information officer normally has a book called the Almanac, which uh, contains sort of like the the Wikipedia of Insula. Oh, the word. Yes, uh, and they can tell other people like maybe you're reading a paragraph you're like what's a plump limb, and Julia can be like, well, a plump limb is blah 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 blah, and just read out from the book. I think we got the very best information officers we possibly could. <laughs> I, I think I thoroughly agree with that. What's cool about this game, Matt, mm -hmm. uh, is that, I, and I know, like, I know that you really like asymmetrical roles, mm -hmm. but these were designed. I'm totally just pitching your game, guys. <laughs> these were designed uh, with the with the idea in mind that people can pick up a role, go away, come back in a couple of weeks to play a game together, pick up a different role. Like it's not. You're locked into that for the eternity of. It's not like your with an players. RPG, like right. your players there or your players not. Right. Like you can pick up and and go yeah. as your game group plays along. So you don't have to be like, hey guys, I really don't want to be the leader tonight. I think I'll take a back seat and be the navigator or something like that. Yep. Yeah, and that was kind of important to us. Um, having played a number of Legacy or other games like this, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you're playing Gloomhaven or Pandemic Legacy, and you're like. All right, I've been the medic or the the sawbones or whatever ten times. Whew! I'd really like to switch, but if I do that, I'm going to screw over the whole party because all the points are on the medic, <laughs> and you know that character's got the best sword and the best shield. So all right, I'll play it again. Fine. Uh, <laughs> this takes that away. <laughs> Josh had a tendency to hoard the best things for yeah. himself. Just throw that out there. All right, so how do we just dive into this head first? Uh, so to start, uh, you've got your storybook there. 
And yes. the storybook has at the beginning of it uh, a page called page one. Ah, <laughs> place to start. It has the introduction for story four, Blast from the Chloroplast, which is the story we will be playing today. So to begin, you just go ahead and read that. All right. Or the commander tells us who's going to read that. Commander? Uh, Matthew? Yes, make Commander. It, make, make, <laughs> make yourself useful. Yes. All right. Fetching you some coffee. <laughs> I don't drink coffee. All is quiet on the Odyssey until the ship needs its routine inspection to continue its journey around the Federation. The mechanic at the Lucky Landing spaceport tells you, it should be an easy process. I don't know why they didn't do it when you first arrived in Insula. But it's not that easy. Um, the mechanic says, your ship is in violation of over... 50 environmental regulations. I think I saw your thrust. I think I saw thrusters like yours in a museum once. Uh, Matthew, hmm? aren't you in charge of engineering? Oh, no, I'm the commander. Are these your environmental <laughs> violations? You ask if she could upgrade your ship. Oh, not me, she says. You need the plumb limb for this one. You know what a plumb limb is, Anne? Oh, but of course. All right. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> she hands you the business card of a plumb limb named... Molia Fagden on Brumagum and slaps a sticker on your ship door. The sticker, she tells you, will alert Federation authorities that your ship is unauthorized for travel to anywhere but Brumagum in order to make the necessary repairs. That's rude. Back what if I want to be sneaky and go other places? I don't need you calling me out. Back on board the Odyssey, the main view screen glows purple and red, displaying the seal of the Federation. This can mean only one thing. An official me message from Federation headquarters. The message plays, and a robotic voice shouts, <clears throat> Notice to captain and crew, we have been informed that vehicle emissions testing is overdue for the Odyssey. To renew registration of this vehicle, it must comply with Federation mandated emissions requirements. <laughs> Oops. There's really no way you can avoid this, is there? The message continues. Proceed directly to nearest inspection facility under penalty of law. Nearest facility to your location is... Recording pauses, and a completely different robotic, robotic voice completes the sentence. On Brumigum. To Brumigum it is. Ta-da! So, Nav, Ta add the Brumigum map to your play area. Beautiful. Amazing, it's already there. You You're so good at this! Yeah. Information, open your passport to Story 4, Chapter 1. And com... That's you, Commander. Yeah. Continue to Chapter 1, A Good Mechanic. Is hard to find. Right. So the passport is the save file for 1001 Odysseys. Um, what we have is a little folder where we write down the things that happen. And uh, each time you play, you pull that folder back out, and it will tell you what chapters you're able to go to, what items you've collected, what contacts you've made, uh, and the various missions that you've been on in the past. Okay. There it is. Stellar. It is there. Ooh. Awesome. Bum, bum, bum. <clears throat> it's good. Can so, we talk um, about how cute this little plum plum is with the uh, headscarf here? That's absolutely adorable. Yeah, yeah. Pretty stinking cute. All right. So. Yeah. So, so, yeah. So, you turn to chapter one, uh, A Good Mechanic, which is the title. And we'd record that in the passport, written down that that is chapter one, and we have access to it. Um, and then to continue the game, you would just read out what is in that paragraph on page two. Commander? Um, just It's just the paragraph? Yeah. No, I, I think I want to hear Josh mumble through this one. <laughs> oh, Captain, my Captain. Oh, Captain, my Captain. It's oh, paragraphs. Captain, my Captain. You land in a small village at the edge of Siren and call the mechanic on the card. Sure, I can fix you. Sure, I can fit you in tomorrow, she says. You hear a long, loud crunching of metal from the shop. Too much to finish tonight. Just come by my shop in the morning, and I'll help you out. You park the Odyssey next door and settle in for a restful night of natural gravity. That's nice. In the morning, you look for the local department of multidimensional vehicles in the mechanic's yard. The shop in front has a bright, friendly sign which says... Pollet, ship service, spaceships, rocket ships, and other vegetable vehicles. You see ships in various states of disarray along with a large pile of leaves and tubers. All you need to do is find your mechanic, pay her the fee, and wait for her to upgrade your ship. Updates. Nav. Add location card BG-01 to the map. That's you. So 
Matt can show the card off. All right, so BG-01, these are what the cards look like. And on the back side here, we've got this. So the intergalactic spaceport and the mechanics yard. So we've got some things to uh, add to our map over here. So Nav, that's all on you, buddy. Uh, I gotta, so well, hold on one second. So when we're looking at this card here, uh, Chris and or yes. Julia, these symbols here, what do these reference? Those are referring to the various types of things you can interact with uh, at that location. So uh, what you have there on the intergalactic spaceport are the symbols for passersby. Um, uh, I forget what we call the look one, uh, but it's uh, essentially points of, yeah, points of interest. Yeah, points of interest. Uh, and then travel. <laughs> and on the mechanics yard, you've got passersby uh, contact, a specific contact, and then mechanical bits. Okay. Perfect. And I'm guessing since that's B1 that it's going to go in... Uh, B one the the map here has letters for the oh, columns. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, thing? no, BG means Brumagum. So there's a stack of Brumagum cards. Yeah. So you have to uh, find the matching background first of that picture, thing. and it overlays on the map. Right. That's a navigator job. By yeah, the way. it is. Uh, it's it just is like I'm. <clears throat> <clears throat> Can he do it? I can't handle that. <laughs> Where the card goes. He he knows what he's doing. Yeah, he's actually a really good navigator. I'm very proud of you, Josh. Hey, you done did it. Ooh, look at what you did. You did it. Yeah. It's, it's a round of applause. Like so yeah, every location card has a specific spot on the map that it locks into. Uh, and in the background of the location card, there's sort of a crosshairs pattern. Yeah. Uh, and those will always line up with one of the lines, vertical and horizontal, on the sides of the map. Ah. Hey, how about that? Because each dot will always be in one specific quadrant. Uh, for example, I believe that is in I3 and I4. This is or I2 I? And I3. Yep. And no, I think 3 and 4 is sounds about right. Yep. yep. Okay. Boom to There you go. Uh, so uh, now we continue with the other bits in the paragraph. Right. Info, add quest 1, find a mechanic to your password. Ops, add We're writing it down over here. Totally. Ops, add the quest card 1 to your quest board with a locked card in slots two, three, and four. So this is our quest board over here, our mission board now, right, right. Chris? Yeah, so this is, uh, this is a one month out of date prototype book uh, because the cards match it, uh, where missions were still called quests. Um, it's the same idea, it's just we decided mission was much more spacey sounding. Quest one so card well. that board is now called mission control instead of your quest board, because mm -hmm. uh, that also sounds cool. <laughs> <laughs> These are important things to consider when uh, putting out awesome games. All right. Yeah. Uh, and you need to put the quest one card on quest one. Yep. And then. Uh, ops, at action card E, talk with the down arrow, contact to quest card one. So uh, your action cards have a couple of different choices on them. In, in the real world, they'll have two sides, but those are uh, prototype cards. Um, and if you will be able to tuck them under your your mission card to show one possible action. Oh, so that. action E could either be talk to somebody that you have a contact with or, or talk to a travel associate. Awesome. Why don't you label And those are how they interact with the uh, location icons on the board. That's really cool. So, but wait. So that means that at that location, we have the ability to talk to someone. Now, but there were two choices on here, so we're only going to see one. Mm -hmm. Yep. And how do we get to the other one? Uh, the book will uh, different, qu uh, different missions will <laughs> give you different uh, bits of the world you can interact with. Okay, yeah, so this depending is... Depending on how you progress in the story. So this is not necessarily that both of these actions are available, but just one is hidden. This is that this card is only showing one, but they're... We're using this yes. card for multiple actions, so this Correct. is the one to show. Okay. Yep. I'm on the same page. Page one. Welcome aboard the page. Thanks. Uh, so now that you have finished reading the paragraph, we yes. got the board set up, you probably want to do something. I think that sounds like And really whenever good. you want to do something in Odysseys, uh, all you have to do is combine a mission, an action, and a location that matches that action. So uh, we've got mission one, which is to find a mechanic. Mm hmm We've got the action, talk to a contact. Mm -hmm. uh, so we can do that any place on the board where the contact icon is on the location. 
So that's either the spaceport or the mechanic. Well, the contact icon, this is the down arrow, right? Oh, so sorry, we're matching it up right. with yes. the mechanic chart. The board. Yes, I can. So yeah. if I zoom in a bit here. There we go. So yeah, the mechanics yard right. is where we have the contact icon. So well, my vote is to do the mechanics yard. Well, there's so many choices at this, at this point. So the other two <laughs> actions of the passerbys and the mechanics are locked because we don't have that in the action on the mission control board. Is that correct? Right. Those okay. just uh, There's lots of things that location you can interact with. And it just turns out that the one you're interacting with right now is a contact you've made, okay. uh, Malia Thagden. All righty then. All right, so who, deter who determines that we're doing the action? It's a joint decision? Yeah, we all discuss it, and the commander is, of course, in charge if there's mm -hmm. a disagreement. First dies. So uh, I thought that sounds like a great idea. You, you we like have so many idea? choices, yeah. I'm just a little overwhelmed. Okay, perfect. So if we do have that option now, uh, we want to do the uh, talking yeah. to someone in the mechanics yard. How do we go about doing that in the book? So what we do is you place that shiny token you've got, which represents us, the crew of the Odyssey, and you place it on the dot for the location we want to go to. So... Um, there this is totally a final component. We're gonna ship out uh, a <laughs> blue marble tile with a uh, with a white swirl, and that's the crew of the Odyssey. Um, I like it. So, anyways, that token is now in one particular set of coordinates. Uh, in this case, it's at I four, because if you go I. up, you get to the I, and if you go to the right, you get to the four. There we go. And the mission and action correspond to the rest of the code we're gonna enter into the book. So what we wind up with is E4, or oh, sorry, E1, uh, I4. Okay. E1, right? I4. Yeah. So showing it off, that's what it looks like in the book there. E1, I4, yeah. the mechanics yard. So yeah, we go into the booklet and we find E1, I4, and then we read that paragraph out. Uh, and helpfully, see how the, uh, the parts of E1, I4 are different shapes? Those match the shapes of uh, the places they come from in the game world. Oh, look at so, that. Um, so here is the, the E and the 1. Has that. The E yeah. has that 1. The the 1 is the uh, hexagon shape there. And then the... Yeah, the quest card. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. And I4 is the coordinates. Um, and it helpfully confirms in the booklet that it is, in fact, the mechanics yard, so you're in the right place. And yep. then you read it and do whatever it says. And that's really all the rules of 1001 Odysseys. That's um, awesome. There's only one more thing to go over, which is uh, when we complete a mission, which is next. All right. uh, so did you get me my tea? Yeah. Okay, I, I drank it. What? Now you can read. Oh, right. no. <clears throat> Last night, <clears throat> the mechanic's <throat> yard bustled with the whirring and sawing of plum plum tools. Now every screwdriver and wrench sits motionless. No one has even switched on the workshop lights yet. A violet plum plum wearing a pink bandana dozes on a patch of moss next to the shop. Her name tag says she is Molia Thagden. She must be your mechanic. You gently shake her arm to wake her up, but she only looks up for a moment with her eyes still half shut. Not now, Grandpa, she murmurs. I'm late for my biology test. She nods off again, gurgling through drool. You knew the plum plum enjoyed their leisure time, but not this much. You wonder why a highly recommended technician would fall asleep on the job. Update operation set quest one slot one to observation. So now Ooh. I'm going to take one of these observation cards here, and this is going to green screen. Man, eh, not too bad. And this is going to go in the slot one of the quest. So let me zoom out a, a tad here. Just leave it where it is. All right. Leave it where it is. I'm about to move this. <laughs> All right. Not such an idea. So because of that, that means that we can now do an observation action? Uh, no, what that represents is that the thing you did gave you momentum towards completing your mission of finding a mechanic. Mm -hmm. And you did that by observing. Um, there are many different momentum card types, and each of them represents the way in which you've made progress. Uh, the reason that this is important is when you finish one of those rows on your mission control board, you actually get to advance in that mission. Uh, and you do that by reading across the top, uh, in this case, Q1OLLL. -L -L. You look up that paragraph in the book, and that's how the mission sort of proceeds. Okay. Q1OLLL. -L -L. So continue to X111. X111. Mm -hmm. 
Your mechanic who is supposed to upgrade the Odyssey has fallen asleep and won't wake up. Maybe someone around here can recommend a replacement. If you can't find a mechanic near the spaceport, perhaps one near the busy town center of Pollitt or the residences of Watergum Acres can recommend one. I just want to take a quick pause. I know we showed off the page where we found the beginning of the story, but let's show off the code here, too. So this is in line with the top of the row that we've got going right now, the, the Q1 O for observation, right. locked, locked, locked. Mm -hmm. Does continue to X111. So and then X111 is this story right here. How about them apples? So you can see there are lots of different codes that correspond to the things you can do to resolve a, uh, a mission. Um, so that's how your choices sort of get played out uh, in the game. All right. So navigation, please add location card BG02 to the map. So BG02 is this one here. So it is the Pollet Central Garden and Watergum Acres. And we've got two new icons mm -hmm. on this one. Julia, what is the sun? And it looks like a fruit icon to the right. <laughs> Um, so the sun is, is the vista. Yeah, the sun is the vista. And the fruit, I think, is just a wild? No, uh, it's plants. It is plants. Okay, yeah. so it's plants. Um, we already have done passers-by. And then let's see, water gum acres is just passers-by and then look at. Yep, points of interest. Look, look, look at our, our little... navigation. This it's is so great. good. All right, so then operations remove action card E, talk from quest card one. So we can no longer talk at that. Uh, We've talked to our contact, and we're done with that part of the quest. Operations Mission. add action card B, talk to quest one, passerby. So we're, talking, we're doing a passerby action, which is that text bubble right there. All right. So that's being added. <clears throat> And then we've got operations remove the locked card from quest one slot two. Is that that's this slot here? That is slot two. Okay, so then, well, but it was locked and we didn't. It went away. It's it's now unlocked. So you can complete the mission again. It's now it's now open. Oh. So what that's saying is that uh, you know our our mission to find a mechanic has evolved. Now we talked to our contact and it was totally useless because she was a sleepy mm -hmm. plum head. <laughs> Now we could talk to any passerby anywhere and be like, "Hey, you know where there's a mechanic?" And be like, "No, you're dumb. Uh, this is this is how we write the game. <laughs> no, go away." Uh, but also, there's one new slot open on the mission control board to represent that we have a new avenue for making progress. Right. We tried one way that didn't work. Er, let's try a different way. Yep. So we can go to any of these open spaces on the board here and effectively mm -hmm. talk to a passerby. Okay, but slow your roll, because everybody knows when you play an RPG, you must talk to <laughs> everybody. You'd have never gotten the line, I used to be an adventurer like you until I took an arrow to the knee, unless you talk to everybody. Well, so what's your vote, Commander? Oh, this is important. Well, I think that we should stay in the mechanics yard and talk to that passerby, because it's on there and i'm a completionist well personally i feel like the residents of Watergum acres they sound like they have money so they would probably know a good mechanic because they're willing to shell out the extra plum plum dough if you know what i mean are you asking for a raise so i think that we should go to Watergum acres and start asking around for mechanics i want to go to the gardens to see the flowers oh, you're not helpful either information what is your suggestion um you know, you can't go wrong searching the mechanics yard. All right. Audience, can we... Uh, oh, yeah, we have an audience. Set up. We have an audience. So if you are in our audience here, uh, <laughs> Twist Gaming is all about being interactive. I like the mechanics yard. Julia and Chris and Information also like the mechanics yard. Josh wants to go see the pretty flowers, and Matt is water, interested I in the rich water people. Gum, water gum so let's go ahead and click on our faces to see who you agree with. Uh, so you kind of you two behave a lot. Yeah, but you see the one hundred percent is kind of. Oh, there okay, we go. There there we go. go. Uh, see, I think go rich people. See, I, I'm making nice the most block. sense here. Watergum Acres, they they're very hoity-toity. I yeah. feel like they're going to know what they want out of their mechanics. But if you've ever played, you have to talk to everybody. You Let's have talk to the rich people first to get money. Anything. Yeah, I'm setting my priorities straight. <laughs> that way we could bribe other people in the future. All right, so it looks to me like we're going to Water Gum Acres. Yes. So, Anne, if you can please move us over to Water Gum Acres. Thanks, Commander. With your gigantic make, fingernails. Make, make noises. Make, make. <laughs> 
There we go. <laughs> All right. So we're at Watergum Acres, and we are doing the talk to passers-by action. So then, again, so Julia and Chris were teaching us that the way we find this in the book is we're going to take B action B, which has, mm -hmm. uh, you know, this kind of flag icon. Number one. We're gonna That's under your thumb. Oh, on sorry. the math. Th there, there we go. So B, one, and then the quadrant that that's in. So what's the quadrant that uh, that one's going to be in? It Navigator. Looks like K4. K4. B1, K4. <coughs> B1, K4. It's a fine paragraph. All right. B1, K4, water gum makers. <laughs> and that uh, verifies what we're going for here. There we go. Dozens of pink bulb-shaped houses sit along the curving walkways. More houses grow overhead on tree branches as large as sequoias. What should be a bustling plum plum neighborhood is very quiet and very still. Hoping to find someone who can point you in the direction of a mechanic, you approach the first house you've and find several plum plum nestled in moss patches in the front yard, all asleep. You prod a green plum plum with a stick. You're rude. Yeah. <laughs> I said you do it. Yeah. <laughs> Andrew's broken it with a stick. <laughs> he <laughs> murmurs, Not now. I'm giving a speech to my class. But wait. Where did my plants go? Oh, no! I really appreciate the emphasis they put on education. And then drifts back into rolling snores. Update operations set quest one slot four to observation. Uh, slot four. Slot four. So, then there's already a card there, and you set it to something new. You just take the card away and replace it. Okay, so we had a locked card there, and now... We're... That was such an aggressive throw. Uh, if quest two is not in play... <laughs> which it's not, no. do the following. Info, add quest to learn about sleeping plum plum to your passport. Operations, add quest to card to your quest board with locked cards in three and four. So we're adding quest to now. And locked cards in positions three and four. And you gently put the locked card back after you violently flung it across the <laughs> table. Were you apologizing to it as you put it down? All right. Make it look nice in the board and then uh, nice uh, operations, if quest two slot one is empty, set it to general. Otherwise, set quest two slot two to general. So quest one is empty. That's getting general. Do we get rid? No, the op we still have the observation there. Does that quest two slot one? Okay. <laughs> yeah, that was lots of things happening at once. All that's right. why Very we got a exciting good... discovery. And so I'm going to zoom out a little bit just so we can see. You want to come our... back here to the uh, mission control board? So you can see some stuff's happening there. We've, we're getting a, a complete level, but we don't have a complete mission going on yet. So no. I think we still have to go and talk to some people. And, and we didn't get an action card yeah. for Quest 2? Now you want to talk. I uh, did not say to put we, an action card. It did not. So we know that um, there is a mission that we kind of are curious about why there are all these sleeping plum plum. We've kind of learned a little bit about it, but... We still want to find our mechanic first. Mm -hmm. All right. So, you know, I don't know why we didn't do this in the first place. I think the best bet would be to go to the mechanics yard here and talk to some passersby. <laughs> That's my vote. That's smart. That's smart is... talk. I'm glad I thought of it for the first time just now. I really, I really would murder you if we were lost in space. <laughs> <laughs> I still want to go to the garden. <laughs> yeah, because you want food. You're always hungry. We're not going to the garden. And Commander, what is, what is your vote here? Uh, yeah, let you know, Matthew, it's important to let your subordinates think that they come up with great <laughs> ideas. So I just want to compliment your intelligence, and uh, let's go to, over to the mechanics yard. All right, so if you guys are watching live at home, you can click on our faces and uh, choose which direction you want to go. Yep. Click on myself for the mechanics yard. Click on Josh for the, uh, the gardens. Uh, Julia, do you have a recommendation here? Um... Like I said, the mechanics yard is always a good bet. Um, but you know what? This is this is a world to explore. So so I, I favor I mean you can really go anywhere and something something will happen. Mm -hmm. Face clicking has begun. It I, has. And Josh is rising rapidly. <laughs> yes. Oh no! <laughs> oh no. Oh oh no, what happened there? Our uh -oh. camera died. Ooh. Just a second. All right. Oh, okay. We'll go to the garden. Josh well, is got, Josh is going to fix that. The, <laughs> the camera's still on. Uh -oh. No, no, the main cam. Yeah, it's still on. All right, so we awesome. are going to go. It's fine. I'm still here. Mild technical difficulties. Josh will be taking care of that. But we are going to the garden right now. 
Uh, so in the garden, uh, we can talk to some passersby. And so what are we going to... So and what's yeah. the, the coordinates uh, for that garden? And so, I can look it up in the book there. Sure. The garden coordinates, well, it has to be the uh, little circle there. So that is K3. So B, mm -hmm. uh, B1K3. 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 All right. So that is the... Josh, do you want to just maybe put it on the board cam only? You are shaking everything. Uh, so B1K3, the Pollet Central Garden. Feathery leaves tickle your head as you pass under towering topiary. The gardens seem to be mostly empty, but you do hear snores erupting from a couple of plump limbs somewhere in the greenery. Just when you think you might call it quits, you see the head of the mind weaver poking out above the walls of the garden's hedge maze. She seems pretty chill, and she's awake, so you wave to get her attention. Wait, I'm, what's a mind weaver? Yeah, I'm, I'm there too. Uh, a mind weaver is a tall, thin, gray alien with giant eyes, uh, kind of like what you've seen. Uh, and they have mild telepathic abilities, Ooh. as you will soon see. So I don't have a picture, unfortunately, but I have one of these information sheets here. And look at that, mm -hmm. tall and slender. It's like you knew what you were talking about. <laughs> oh. uh -huh. She might be a mind weaver. Might, maybe. 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 Uh, so mind weaver says to you, oh, wow, you must be humans. She gapes at you like you're a rare exotic bird. I can tell because you're oily and you have tiny hairs all over you. Oh, it really is you. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> she suddenly see, oh goodness. She suddenly shakes her head as though trying to get water out of her ear. Your thoughts are way too noisy. Really you're going to be a headache. <laughs> but to answer your question, I'm Samuel and I'm here on vacation. That's cool. Hey, Sam. Uh, so choose, add a blue disc to, or red disc to. So there's two options we can do here. So this is going to, I'm assuming this is going to prevent us from backtracking once we place these discs. Right. And so, so our two, op uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, the, the discs are the decision information storage chips, yeah. uh, D-I-S-C. And you'll be placing a blue or a red disc on the location, Pollet Central Gardens. And that will record that we've made a choice. And that choice might have impacts down the line for the rest of the episode. Right. Um, That's exciting. And generally, it just prevents us from doing the other choice because we've already made one choice. So, guys, if you think uh, blue. No, no, no. No? no we have the choice you are. have to figure out what the choice is. You're not just picking a color. What? That's yeah. random. That's, that's all right. All right, then. So we can either... Uh, Ask if she has seen any visitor information centers, or ask if she knows and uh, knows of anyone who can help you find a mechanic. So, visitor information centers for blue, or red to help you find a mechanic. I mean, I think we. So, Matt, your mechanic, I'm information center. Yeah, correct. Just like real life. Just that. Just I like think the info center. Again, if you are just joining our stream, Josh has built a really cool thing. Not built. He probably stole it from somewhere and put it on. But if you click uh, on oh. your screen uh, anywhere with your mouse, uh, it'll put these cool little shapes up and calculate the percentage of people who have clicked. And we can decide which way we are going. I mean, I th we want to get a mechanic going. We don't want to get thrown in intergalactic prison. We're just looking for info. <laughs> that there. sounds like... Yeah, chapter six. We're looking for the help desk. <laughs> We're looking for the... The info center. You can definitely tell which one to use IT and the other one built robots. They're probably, <laughs> uh, to be fair, the info center people are probably sleeping on the job before like the or whatever is causing everyone to go to sleep. So, <laughs> so right, it looks, looks like, like we're getting a mechanic. Just barely, but we're yeah. getting the mechanic. So, uh, if you can please place the red disc all over the uh, the choice matrix there. Did you want to pick it? And so then that's going to move us to story X214. That's brown. So this one. And help That's him out, red. please. He found it. <laughs> uh, so for our viewers at home, Josh is colorblind. So it is Nav's job. Um, hmm. The mind weaver taps her chin, thinking. You know, I learned the family running the spaceport is one of the oldest in Pollitt. They're called the Bumbles, I believe. They've lived here for generations and are very friendly and always thinking about spaceships. I bet they could help you. Uh, Nav, please add location card BG7 to the map. BG7. Ooh, new card. So BG7 
is the Bumble Homestead. All right. Home, home on the range. Um, the Bumbles made all their money with the Bumble app for dating and then went to spaceships. I... D- <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't even. <laughs> so where where is that going, Josh? Um, trying to figure that out. He's doing navigate stuff. I was. What are you doing? I'd like to point out that it is the commander's job to find the paragraphs. Yeah, you're doing a great job. <laughs> oh no, you've been usurped. I've been <laughs> usurped. It is a mutiny. So we didn't add any new cards no. to the story. We so just have a location. I think we got to say go say what's up to the bumbles. But. We can go back to the mechanics yard and talk Why? to the passerbys there. I, 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 I'm, I'm with Matt Bumbles. Bumbles? Bumble Bumbles. buddies. Rich people. Yeah. So click on either Josh or Matt for Bumble, for having a bumbling good time. Uh, and click on Ann if you want to go to the mechanics yard to find a mechanic. <laughs> <laughs> you know. I don't think you have that card in quite the right spot. Is it not the right spot? Uh, yeah, a little okay. bit low. I was a little low. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> I think Anne's just caught in the crossfire. I do. I think crossfire. So. Crossfire. Oh, there we go. Uh, I I have it was a. Close. It just, it, it um, just nudge a little bit. Look. I think it might no. actually. Oh, there we oh, go. Wow. There you go. Okay. <laughs> All right. So it's seventy percent. I think we're gonna. Ooh. I'm not going to go see the Bumbles? No. Nope. Not, not yet, at least. Turn it off now while it's still me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're going to the mechanics. Uh, so if you could move our spaceship over there. Wait, I need some uh, spaceship noise, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you have like four different people. Yeah. We have four different engines. Look, we. we That's put... why we're getting investigated. <laughs> 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 All right. So what's the quadrant there, Ann? Oh, uh, that's a good question. Uh, that is I four three B one I four I four B one I four the mechanics yard. You find Malia snoring in the bushes in front of the shop with her bandana pulled over her eyes. At least she looks comfortable. Everybody's sleeping. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> if you have an item in, if you have item A in your passport, I don't think we do. We do not. So we're gonna go to X two two two. X222. Bear with me. And that is Nav. Please add a white disc to our section. Ooh. And nearby, a pair of Elements, apprentice mechanics named Mino and Mino, are looking at a ship's diagnostic map. Uh, so, what's an Elements? Elements are cold blooded lizards. Ooh. Uh, they're very friendly, but they're also a little bit. Uh... Unsettling looking. <laughs> Julia threw me off because she said cold blooded, I, and I thought like emotionally they were yeah. cold blooded. Then she's like, "Oh, they're, they're friendly. They're, they're friendly. <laughs> oh, no. They're just physically <laughs> cold blooded." So we've got a picture of an elements here, and they're actually kind of adorable looking. Oh, they are. I hate lizards. I was getting really worried that I was not going to like this lizard people, but this is yeah, somebody that I can get that I very get. Dragon. Yeah, that's my favorite. They they kind of give me the vibe of Mushu. Yeah. For Mulan. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, uh, you ask if they have heard from anyone else working at the shop. Not at all, says Minnow. But we keep trying to call everyone at home every 15 minutes. No one's picking up. Isn't that weird? Uh, so update. Ops, if quest 2 slot 1 is empty, is not. Uh, otherwise set quest 2 slot 2 to general. So quest 2 slot 2 is general. It is general already. So quest... Two slot two. Yeah. Oh, that's flat one. <laughs> In the entire history of a thousand and one Odyssey's demos mm-hmm. uh, of Pax Unplugged and all the streams we've done, nobody has ever done this thing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so uh, you have resolved. Uh, so we're going to resolve mission two. Uh, because you have filled up the row. Oh, yeah, look at without that. Without doing an action in mission two. <laughs> <laughs> This All is impressive business, and this is this is the, the game system is versatile. <laughs> <laughs> You've just been stumbling around. You're like everybody's asleep. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we know it. Everybody's asleep. Is that a tinge uh, of so disappointment in your voice, Chris? Q two G G L L. Oh goodness, Q two G G L L. And again, so when you are looking for the results for your quests, as Chris was explaining to us, you're going to read your mission. 
That was so rude. Q2, <laughs> GG, <laughs> LL. Yeah. We're going to X224. What he said. Ding. You're welcome, Captain. Your mechanic is not the only Plumplim on Brumagum taking a day off. You have found Plumplim asleep wherever you find them, yes. and you're not the only one who has noticed. All over town, calls are going unanswered, workers are out, and very little seems to be getting done at all. As you reflect on the situation, an Elemens walks by, his brow pointedly furrowed. His tongue flicks outward to taste the air, and he abruptly stops pacing, turning to face you. Epopphenia! Offworlders! He exclaims, quickly adding, Pardon my language, but you must come with me. Have you seen what's happening? You mentioned that all the Plum Plum are asleep. Precisely! He hisses. The town hall should be full of Plum Plum. This is highly irregular behavior. Highly irregular! He points his ear sharply at you and flicks his tongue out once again, this time just a few centimeters from your nose. I'm Sarbon, the 4th District Comptroller, and you smell trustworthy. Please find some help for me. There's so much to do. Perhaps together we can solve this crisis. I'll be at Town Hall in my office. Come find me when you have a plan. You're not going anywhere until the Odyssey is repaired, so you may as well help this stressed-out lizard man. <laughs> With a British accent? Operations. If Quest 1 slot 2 is empty, remove all action cards from Quest 1. You think he visited Earth and influenced Winston Churchill? Remove all action cards from Quest 1. Um, it's the Ooh. doctor as a lizard man. Uh, operations, remove all action cards from quest card two. Uh, navigation, add location uh, card BG3 whoa, to the map. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold up, hold up. You yep. removed... No, 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 no. Stop, wait, stop, wait, stop, wait, stop, wait. stop, 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 stop. Remove the action cards. Oh, action Those cards. Those are the ones That's on the That's not an action quest. card. Yeah, why are you yelling at me? That's that one. <laughs> yeah. Um, two was open. Else? Yes, this two, was up. two was open. There. You had O blank LL. All right. Wait, no. O blank L O. L O. Oh, you're right. We did uh, we did put something on slot four. Aha. Uh -huh. We were just keeping you on your toes there, Chris. Every once in a while yeah, I pretend yeah. like I know Good what job. I'm doing. Good job. So we're adding BG three to the map. So BG three is the communications <laughs> tree and Pollock Town Hall. So Josh, mm -hmm. can you please add this? Oh wait, to go back. Map? That definitely looks like something that was in one of my MIS classes. What is that data disk? Yeah, that one. Uh, that, so uh, on the communications tree, the third one is the symbol for diplomats. Because it's a yeah, monocle. Man. Yeah, it's a space monocle. <laughs> and, uh, and on Pollock Town Hall, the first symbol is for government. Mm -hmm. And the second symbol is for computer access. Yeah. All right. The uh, monocle reminds me of the Mr. Handys from Fallout. I don't know what that means. <laughs> yeah. Right. Where does this go? Okay, so... That's your job. That's what we keep you here for. Info, please add quest three. Uh, get help for Sarbon to your passport. Operations. Right here. It's happening. <laughs> Operations, add quest card three to your quest board with locked cards in slots three and four. All right, so locked cards in three. I actually don't think I have any more locked cards. Uh, okay. Oh, did I not send you enough? Yeah, I think I <laughs> think there one might be one there locked card missing. Um, just put a card face down there and have an L on it. Or you can move one of the lock. You can move the lock from uh, quest two slot four down a slot. It'll be fine. Okay. Uh, and it'll, then it'll just live in the middle of those two rows. Uh, operations Danger add that happen with prototypes. <laughs> operations add action card B talk to passerby to quest three. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Quest three. There you go. All right, so Ooh. we're on quest you know, three now. Matt, nobody saw the mission board on the camera. You had to call me out like that. It's so rude. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> so quest three. So we've got a couple options now of uh, of things we can do. Yeah. Oh, I'm still trying to figure out where this goes. On yeah, map. so our, our mission is to go find help for Sarbon, who's trying to figure out why all the Plum Plum are asleep. Uh, and you haven't put down the communications tree yet. He, he didn't know where it... He wasn't sure where it went. It, there it goes. Uh, when yeah. operations has to help with navigation. Uh -huh. <laughs> My colorblindness doesn't that, probably, yeah. probably doesn't help that. All right, so we can go and talk to some peeps. Um, yes. So 
we're we're trying to talk to Sarbon. I don't think we should go to Town Hall yet. No, but I know you well, guys. We're trying to talk to Town Sarbon. Mm-hmm. You guys wanted to go to the homestead. I, I think, well, because they're the aristocrats, I think that they'll know what's going on, right? Uh, I think the garden was such a good plan. We should see more plants. So I think we should go to the tree now. And this is why we don't listen to you. The what tree? The, the communications, communications tree. Oh, the communications tree. tree. I'm, yeah. I'm going to vote for the homestead. What about the spaceport? You can do the spaceport if you want. I feel like we haven't Where? been to the spaceport. What if there's like new we could people go coming? If all the pummels... All the plum plums? plums are asleep. We can go to the homestead and take all their stuff. That's not very nice. <laughs> Who said we are nice space people? The <laughs> commander. <laughs> Strictly prohibited space regulations. <laughs> so, Josh, is the clicky open? Uh, let me open it. So, what's everyone's votes? I'm voting for the uh, the Bumble homestead. Spaceport. Mm-hmm. Uh, communication tree. Julie and Chris. Uh, gardens. Uh, I'm for the space. Oh, <laughs> Julia and I are the team. Bam. <laughs> Solid. Uh, I mean, the communication street probably isn't a bad idea. I think we should go to the spaceport. The Sally port. The what? I don't know. There's not even. There's not even. An, you're not. Oh yeah. No. Wait. Wait. Oh. Spaceport over here. Yeah. Yeah. Little yeah. I, I think that's all. The, there we there. go. <laughs> So oh, I and and growing. So it looks like spaceport is where we're going. Uh, so if you could please move our ship over to the spaceport, oh, Anne. Ready, guys? Spaceport. spaceport time. All right. So Anne, can you please read me the coordinates of the spaceport? Sure. The uh, coordinates are I three. B- Wait, no. Thanks. And this, ladies and gentlemen, B3, is I how three. you navigate it. B three. <coughs> I three. Oh, in the intergalactic spaceport. Uh, Matthew, uh, I'm gonna read this. <laughs> I just want to see his angry face. Makes <laughs> me so happy inside. You find the parking lot full of angry pilots. You ask if anyone can help you as you walk from ship to ship, explaining the plum plum situation. You think you've got problems? We all have problems, says a Felici pilot, wagging a finger at you. I knew that there was a finger <laughs> wag all in there. I heard it. My ship is full to the brim with Elamensian cheese and anchovies. That's a terrible problem. If I can't get my plum plum buyer out here to move it by tomorrow, I won't get paid. And this whole spaceport will stink like Gemagean trash bin. I hope That's I didn't butcher that. So I may what's have the police be? Go ahead. I mean, I was worried about butchering uh, Gemagean or Gemagean, but I like how you put a whole bunch of letters in Felici. <laughs> uh, Felici are these sort of space cat lion creatures. Um, they're pretty stuck up, as you would imagine. <laughs> yep. There's a, but they're these fierce kind of proud warrior mm-hmm. aliens. And sassy. Like and sassy. And sassy. So sassy. Cats Many are... Felici are Cats are kind of sassy creatures. And I, I am saying that they do use litter boxes of sand and love to destroy house plants. <laughs> a mind weaver captain laughs at Matt. It says it right there. You see where it says that? It's written the book. I see it. Thanks. <laughs> None of the Plum Plum crews are here to unload the goods and cart it across CERN. So we can't even find new buyers. No one here is going to help unless you pay for the cargo they'll have to dump. He looks you over. I don't think you got that kind of cash. Wow. If we went to the homestead, we would have. Yeah, they're so sassy. I wish <laughs> we didn't come here. An older Elamensian pilot looks over you pittingly. Look, kids, I don't have room in my hold, but find another ride and get yourselves to Avalonis, where the Federation government is. Those are the only folks with enough power to figure out this mess, she says. I'm sure you can figure it out. You look like a smart boy. It doesn't say boy, but I felt like it needed to have it. Thank you. (laughs) So the updates there. Uh, Operations. Yeah. Please remove all action cards from quest card three. Gotcha. (laughs) That that wasn't noise. Ooh, get on the Millennium Falcon. I'm so on board with that plan. (laughs) Operations. Please add action cards D, interact, tinker. D, interact, tinker, two. And E, talk, travel. E, talk, okay, travel. To quest three. 
All right. So we've got two things that on Quest 3. Yes, cool. We do. <clears throat> so we can either tinker or travel. Operations. That's me. Please set Quest 3, slot 1, to conversation. Quest 3, slot 1, to conversate. Yes, okay. please. Why now? Okay, be dokey. So we got stuffs to do. That's okay, a guys. pretty full mission board there. Guys, tinker. I think that means that we can just try and fix our ship ourselves. Oh my God. That's what I'm voting for. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, there's a tinker Sorry. option at the homestead. Yeah, let's tinker at the homestead. Oh. I'll take one of their ships. <laughs> yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first time I've kind of been with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we we do need a counterport plan. option. So, uh, how about everyone click on Chris and Julia if they want to tinker at the mechanics yard? <laughs> oh, they could travel. Oh, that's true. They could travel. Yeah, but I'm not ready to go off world. Well, no, 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 no. It's not. It's not travel. It's talk to somebody about travel. Uh, oh. So you'd be asking people, "Can you help me travel?" Uh, whereas the tinker action is interacting with something you can tinker with. Exactly. Not necessarily our ship? Not necessarily. I mean, our ship's not at the Bumble homestead. We're walking around. Our new um, ship could be at the Bumble <laughs> homestead. It could or be. There's something to interact with the Bumble homestead. Our new ship and we... could be in this yard, and we could steal one of the sassy people's ships. I mean, they do deserve it. Not the one with anchovies. Yeah. Fastacular. <laughs> If you still, it will be Archer. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm still voting for. Everyone's that asleep. Thing. They don't know what's happening. Is, is Clicky open, Josh? Yeah, Clicky's open. All right. So if you are interested in going over to the Bumble Homestead, go ahead and poke Matt in the face. If you are interested in tinkering here at the spaceport. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm talking at the spaceport. You can't tinker at the spaceport. Is it working? Uh, oh, yeah, it's working. T yeah, hundred percent. I'm all right. There's. I really don't think there's much need for an option after that. Okay. All right. So to get to the, I'll just be taking. You need to make your spaceship sounds. No, you make spaceship sounds. And look, I do the book. That's exactly what this is. Okay. So where am I going? We're tinkering, so it's going to be D, right? Yes. And then D three, three. and then what's the coordinates of that? J two. J two. two. All right. Just crease the book. That's fine. <laughs> Here, Matt, you can read. How about I not crease the book? <laughs> D3J2, Bumble Homestead. You notice a leafy cabbage ship in the driveway. Perhaps you could borrow it for yourself. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You've never piloted a vegetable before. <laughs> <laughs> Great, so sorry. we could make a choice here. We could either climb aboard and see if we can operate the ship or leave it alone. Uh, so <laughs> is that even a choice? That's, it's not, that's not really. a choice. I, I, I don't even think we should put it up for no, a there. No. I think we're borrowing said ship. Captain? If I don't see it. All right. So, <laughs> Josh, please put a brown disc. I think it's going to say X132. Yes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Suddenly, an audio recording crackles to life. Hello? Um, hello? It's me, Bumpin'. Bumpin' Bumble. The recording says, this is urgent. You need to go to Avalonis and bring back help from the embassy. Take my cabbage ship. She flies well. Just park her in direct sunlight and give her plenty of water when you get there. I would go. You hear a yawn on the recording. Mm. But I'm too tired to launch. <laughs> he let us fly the ship. <laughs> 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 uh, operation set quest three slot two to insula. All right, so how do I do that? Is you that planted here? these. All right, this is this is gonna get out of control. Uh, <laughs> insula. There we go. Quest three slot two to insula. So now we've got a completed mission three. So I'm gonna go up here. We do. And we've got, it's going to be Q3CILL. -L. It's one thing to see the great puns that happen in our chat. It's another thing to see the joy that Chris had on his face after he came up with that joke. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so X133, you water the cabbage ship, making sure to wet the roots and not the fragile leaves surrounding the passenger cabin. After leaving it in the sun to fuel, you go to meet, uh, you go meet with your lizard friend. 
Operations remove locked card from quest card slot three. Which quest? Remove three? the locked cards from quest card. Both? Quest three, slot three. Just no, no, no. So put that back in. Quest three, slot three is the only one. Yep. Okay. This is why you're not operations. Remove all action <laughs> cards from quest three. So these go away. And then add action card B, talk government to quest card three. Oh, that's weird. There's two of them there. All right. So we've got that open now. So we can now talk about the government. <laughs> Does, Does this ship have a V8? <laughs> <laughs> ah! That's <awesome>. wah, wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, we don't have much options here. Yeah, the only politics one we have is the Polit Town Hall. Yeah. So I, right. I have... A feeling that's where we're going. Wait, are we already going politicking? That's the only thing we can do. Uh, oh, because it's the only action. All of, oh, you could th so the, all the actions are gone. So the only action we have is, is politicking. All right. So that's going to be B3 and then what is the coordinates? L2. B3, L2. Joshua, if you could give me some ship ideas. <laughs> Pilot Town Hall. The town hall entrance at the base of the communications tree is quiet. You peer around the lobby and see large paintings of past town leaders and vases of orange teacup flowers. Seats for several receptionists seem to grow up out of the floor, but no one is at work today. You walk deeper into the town hall, searching the green pea cubicles. In the last cube, you come upon Sarbon talking to a bookshelf. <laughs> he appears to be giving it a pep talk. <laughs> you are smart. You are important. You are handsome. And you will do a great job. He says, puffing out his chest. He takes a deep breath and turns around to leave the cubicle. Y you, he sputters. I don't know what you saw, but I'll have you know that I'm now in charge of a crisis and I'm doing the best that I can. The best that I can. What are you doing to help? Uh, operation set quest three, slot three to general. Quest three, slot three is going to be general. So How now many filing captains have you given a pep talk to today? Uh, and so that is going to recomplete said quest. Sigle. Uh, the mission there. So that's going to become Q3CIGL. And that's the sigle that you're referencing. All right. So Q3CIGLX134. Not to be confused with sigil. Right. No. Different thing. <laughs> All right. You explain about your vegetable ship. How is a cabbage ship going to help? I like how the story says we explain about our <laughs> vegetable. <laughs> it's, it's our ship now. It's our ship. <laughs> Possessions nine tenths of Plumplin Law. <laughs> how is a cabbage ship yeah, going you to never help? Know where they're going to turn up. I mean, you kind of got implicit permission. Yeah. Sarbon asks, "It would only hold a few dozen Plumplim, not nearly big enough for an evacuation. They are fascinating artifacts, though. The Plumplim have cultivated them for ages." At first, they used onion chips, but the leaks were a problem. <laughs> this is the part of the show where I leave. <laughs> leave. <laughs> leave, leave. Oh, that's fantastic. Make like a story decision tree and leave. <laughs> <laughs> you interrupt to lay out the rest of your plan. You want to go all the way to Avalonis? Do you care at all about comfort? God, he's a carrot. Stop! He looks you up and down. <laughs> Judge, judging by your stature, you'll be squashed in the cabin. <laughs> squashed? <laughs> 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 but I do need help. Uh, and it's not like I'll just turn up here on its own. <laughs> this is why this guy talks to a filing cabinet. <laughs> he chews on his hat thoughtfully. Fine, we'll use your plan. He waves you absently out of his office. The cabbage ship appears crisp on the outside with no sign of wilting, and you easily launch it into an escape trajectory, rocketing towards Avalonis. Info add chapter two, a way to Avalonis to your passport. Chapter one is now complete. Clear all cards from play. You now have access to chapter two, a way to Avalonis. Who did it? Puns ever. <laughs> <laughs> that made so me that so happy. Is one chapter mm -hmm. of 1001 Odysseys. And uh, as you see, when you finished it, we'd record in our passport guide the title of chapter two, uh, Away to Avalonis. But there were many, many different things in chapter one that we did not do. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. um, and there is a way to get directly to chapter three because the chapters aren't in order. They're just um, different places you can get to. Uh, so there's two different paths out of chapter one mm -hmm. and many, many chapters in Odysseys are like that. They have two, three, occasionally one path out. Um, and when we would start the game again, we'd clear up all the cards. We'd start from scratch with whatever chapter two told us to put into play. Mm -hmm. In this case, it would tell us to put out the Avalonis map. Um, That's the Federation capital planet. Yes. Ooh. All in the big places. And we would have adventures trying to talk to the Plum Plum Embassy on <laughs> Avalonis. Get our... And nothing would go wrong. <laughs> I'm sure. Get our big boy politic out of the way, right? That's right. <laughs> Forgot to pack my good monocle. Exactly. Um, there was something that you said earlier, Anne, that I wanted to address, which was that you like to talk to all the people on the planet or all the people in the RPG. Yeah. And we specifically don't let you do that here. Uh, so you had four choices of where to go uh, when you first unlocked mm -hmm. the second part of Quest 1. Um, and it turned out that going to essentially any two of those places will push the story forward mm -hmm. so that you don't have the opportunity to see every single story bit by trying to hit every node possible and exhaustively explore the tree. There's mm -hmm. always something left to explore the next time you play. There's a bunch of different characters you didn't get to meet yeah. in this playthrough. Uh, yeah. We could on a different one. Because replayability is something that's super important to us. Oh, um, totally. We don't want to be in the situation where... Uh, like uh, like in Time Stories or the Choose Your Adventure board game, where yeah. the choices largely are, did I pick the correct path or did I pick the wrong path that uh, cost me five time units because I decided to look in a closet? Yeah. Um, so replaying that is less interesting sometimes because it's, you know, I can go back and say, oh, look, how could we have failed? Uh, whereas in this case, it's, oh, look, how could we have seen something completely different? Right, right, uh, right. And I enjoy it. And stuff that you've done in chapter one will affect what happens in later chapters because of people right. you may have or may have not met. Right. Yeah, like the items that we did not find. Yeah. Ooh. <gasps> we didn't find some items. Yeah. I like how the game gives you that bit of a clue, though, that, hey, if you have your item already here, because that mm -hmm. in, that in, m intrigues you to go back and reads you it again, you're like, oh, I, I missed something. Right, it, right. Would you say that it dangles the carrot in front of you? <laughs> so from a content perspective here uh how much of 1001 odysseys did we see with this sample that we played through i know you said this is chapter one of story four mm -hmm. blast from the chloroplast chloro chloroplast <laughs> what percentage of the game so, are we looking at here uh, the game will have four books mm -hmm. and they'll be I knock things over. They'll be book sized like this. Oh, this wow. is totally a real book and not uh, something completely different. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's definitely not a prototype from a different company entirely. Um, and each of those books will have about eight chapters in it. So oh, wow. there are roughly thirty-two chapters. We have we don't know the exact number because we're still writing them. Uh, and you have seen one of those 32 chapters, and you have only seen part of that one chapter. Right. So you have seen approximately 1.4% <laughs> of 1001 Odysseys. That's nice awesome. Step. So talk to me. I know we got to play with a full team today, <laughs> but uh, how many players does this game accommodate? Um, anywhere from one to four players, and you can even go beyond that if you want to double up on some of the roles. Yeah. Um, I think it might get maybe a little bit... I, I yeah. could see a raucous party of seven yeah. or eight talking about Plum Plum. Yeah. It's just, uh, you know, you're going to be doing a lot more chatting about what's going on mm -hmm. than directly interacting with the board. I uh, think it's cool. Sometimes people yeah. will choose, once they meet enough characters, they'll be like, okay, you read as Sarban, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. you read as this character. And yeah. you kind of get assigned people. To kind of bring them to life. I think, I think, you, did great, kind of... I think you did a great Sarban, by the way. I think that was That was perfect. quality. Yeah. <laughs> Matt you know, if if you ever want to do a uh, you know a digital recording for like these voices as a track to use, <laughs> I'm always available. Uh, I heard it mentioned someone had an issue telling uh, tokens with color blindness. Oh yeah, these these are wooden tokens. They'll have um, they'll have letters on them. They'll be uh, cardboard chits. Color blindness is something we always take into mind with our games, but not always our prototypes because that's a lot harder. Yeah. And then we have a question in chat. Do you uh, imagine the game being accelerated with a solo playthrough? Yeah, so uh, that's certainly true. Uh, if you are playing alone and you are not reading things out loud, 
you're going to go quicker than a group that's reading things out loud to each other, chatting between things. Uh, so, you know, you might be able to finish a chapter in 15 or 20 minutes instead of the hour or so that we took to play. And I'm assuming not be as argumentative about your choices and uh, weigh the moral right. values of them. I mean, it depends on your personality. That is very true. Yeah. You could have an right. inner inner argument. That's true. So does the how about the with the um, content of this story? I'm thinking about age range. What kinds of kids to adults are going to be interested in this? It definitely off the top is something that I could see playing with my kids. Um, how does the storyline yeah. progress? Is this something that I would ever have to be concerned about? I don't want my small child, you know, maybe something else. Oh, no, up. this is totally kid-friendly. Uh, that was something that we always, that's that's something, yeah. that's the direction we always want to go in uh, for this game. I mean, we, we definitely want it to be appealing to all ages. You know, we want kids to like it. We want grown-ups to like it. I think you guys liked it. Um, <laughs> you know, with the humor, we want to we mm -hmm. want to appeal to everyone. And I know when we've demoed it to kids as well, they, they loved it. They love the characters. They love the art. Um, yeah, it's really something that appeals to everyone. Yeah. Um, so you're always going to need somebody, not necessarily an adult, but I would say somebody that's at least 13 or 14 to run the operations yeah. board. Uh, cause <laughs> if you have like three, six year olds trying to play and put <laughs> cards out, it's probably not going to go well. I get a little um, bit. Yeah. but kids can totally participate, read out loud or, uh, you know, yeah. Very cool. Anne, any other questions? Anything burning? Yeah, I want to see the chapter. You want to see chapter two? two. <laughs> uh, Julie and Chris, where can our viewers go to find out more about 1001 Odysseys? Plumplim.com is our central location for all 1000 Odysseys information. It has a link Plum to the Kickstarter Plum. page, which has a much longer URL. That's P-L-U-M-P-L-I-M. Um, Plum 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 by today. So something <laughs> that you guys are doing on the Kickstarter, which I thought was really cool, was that you are getting your backers um, involved in the Kickstarter by, are you still, you guys still doing like a, cho you're allowing them to do kind of a choose your own adventure with the Kickstarter. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yes. Yeah, we're doing a little bit of a, you know, vote on where to go next. We have sort of this uh, adjacent I want to say they're it's a prologue story. Yeah, prologue story. They're part of the Odyssey, uh, but you're playing sort of a, a singular person on the on a planet called Terragas, which mm -hmm. is also part of the Federation, but it's a little bit less inhabited. It's a little bit more wilderness. Mm -hmm. um, so there's uh, a little bit more opportunity for for different things to happen. Um, you're supposedly playing this person who's trying to gather, you know, different. Uh, plant samples and kind of study the life here. And Chris has just brought out the spread for Terragast. You can see a little bit on yes, the screen there. This is one of our yeah. pretty uh, canvases. Um, this is the map for Terragast that we had uh, painted up. That is gorgeous. Yeah, so it's a super mountainous planet with like jungles, you know, kind of at the the base of the mountain. So it's a lots of room for exploration. A couple dangers if you're not careful. Uh, yeah. As long as you stick to the trails. You should be okay. But, you know, <laughs> it's really up the to trails. the voters at this point. So, you yeah, can't... we're updating it every day with story updates. Uh, but you, but you can't die uh, in this scenario. This is the human or are, any scenario or any scenario. Yeah, this is not. This isn't one of those games where uh, you can where you fail and then you have to start all the way over again. I really like and that. Who to Jay Corbally for noticing the fact that we are sticking with our vision and not caving to demands. <laughs> so no Bodie McBoatface? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> no Bodie McBoatship. <laughs> Just oh, checking. Man. I mean, I absolutely love, I feel like a lot more choose your own adventure things are not only coming out in the board game community, but, you know, Bandersnatch uh mm -hmm. with, with um, Netflix. Yeah, with Netflix. It's, it's really cool to see the, you know, the interactivity well i mean all games are really interactive but the the personalized touch on your decision making process and what that has on the story and i like mm -hmm. how you guys specifically with you know with your choose your own adventure sometimes the choices you make beforehand don't necessarily impact the path going forward and i like how you guys have kept that in the forefront of the design because it makes things so much more immersive Oh, totally. It's super fun when you know that you're like, okay, I have this decision here, but it could come back to haunt me. Yes. 
maybe in a good way, maybe in a bad way, we don't know. Um, but you, yeah, you're totally immersed in this world. And I think that's what people like about, you know, RPGs in, in general is, is being able to get immersed in a world and explore it in a way that you can't necessarily in other kinds of media. Definitely. And I think that the art for the game is absolutely gorgeous. And when you have good, pretty art that kind of brings you into a world, it just makes it that much more immersive. Especially when it has a purple color palette. I mean, that's important. Can you talk to me? Uh, Can you talk to me a little bit about the art design and and the artist for the game? Oh, sure. Um, Yeah, so... uh... We have our art director, Alana, who is in charge of doing all those things. And she's mm-hmm. been doing a great job of she's fantastic. corralling the design uh, of the cards and the map. Um, our direct artists, uh, Kari Kareen and Amanda Coronado, uh, are awesome at painting and inking. And they've been doing all of the maps. And they're doing uh, various character art and our beautiful cover here. And we'll probably be adding more artists to help with like characters and little drawings and things Mm -hmm. uh, just so we can get it all done in time to get it to all of you. What is the delivery date talking about getting everything done in time? If I'm backing the Kickstarter now and in the board game community, Uh, we back Kickstarters. We know that things happen and nothing's really a hard deadline. Yeah. Our, our target is next March. Fantastic. We have to write like three more books. (laughs) (laughs) So, Anne, that's a birthday present for me if you want to get me one. I'll let you play with mine. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Julia, Chris, is there anything else that you guys wanted to talk about this evening about 1001 Odyssey? Is there anything else coming through the pipeline at Asmati Games? Uh, So the other thing that is on the near horizon is One Deck Galaxy, which is a not a sequel to uh, One Deck Dungeon, but sort of a... um, a, a descendant. Uh, the mechanics are similar. Uh, you'll be rolling dice, you'll be gaining cards uh, in the same way that the dungeon works, um, but with some fancy new mechanics. And the really cool thing about One Deck Galaxy is that it is set in the same universe as A Thousand and One Odysseys. Oh, so really? The elements, the Plum Plum, the Zib Zab are all playable characters. And you're telling the story of hundreds of years ago when the Federation was first formed. So there's no humans at all. Humans aren't here yet. Huh. That's really cool. Um, Do we get to lose the doors it, again? Because I think that's what you... happened in our, our playthrough of One Deck Dungeon. <laughs> did, did we lose the yeah. doors? Yeah, the doors beat us. Oh. We, we had issues with doors. <laughs> yep. You can lose to a giant space door. <laughs> <laughs> it's super fancy that way. Of course. Julia, Chris, yeah, thank you but, so much. Um, One Deck Galaxy is much more about exploration and discovery uh, than about fighting. It's a very different take on the uh, on the game. Very cool. Definitely want to get our grubby paws on that one, right, Josh? <laughs> Julia, Chris, thank you so much for joining us this evening. We really do appreciate you two taking the time out to chat with us, uh, be our information officer here for Command- Commander Anne, and uh, show <laughs> us the Thousand One Odysseys. It was a ton of fun. Thanks so much. Thank you. So for all of our viewers watching at home, we're going to take a brief break right now, but we'll be back in just a minute to do our first impression session where we talk about our favorite aspects of the game, any constructive criticisms that we might have, and the most important question of the evening of would we play this game again. But for now, big shout out to Ismati Games for sponsoring this stream and all of this week's streams. And signing off for Twist Gaming, I'm Matt. I'm Ann. I'm Josh. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night.